Hi folks, uh, my name is Matas Drukchinskas and I'm a software engineer at Uber and today I'm going to talk how DevPod became the primary development environment at Uber. And uh, in Uber, I work under the developer platform organization and before we begin, I wanted to introduce you to our vision and our mission is to enable engineers to build high quality software consistently, productively and without frustration. But we want to go beyond that and make Uber the standard for how technology should be built in the industry. And this comic represents our vision statement. We want other companies to ask this question. Well, how does Uber do it? And over the years of development at Uber, it has grown significantly with more than 4,000 engineers, over 100 million lines of code and seven main programming languages with the most common ones for production being Go, Java, JavaScript, Kotlin and Swift, managing the growing cost and scale and complexity of development at Uber has became, become a challenge. And back in 2017, uh, Uber's engineering board has made a decision to migrate thousands of micro repos into a few main mono repos. Even though it provided benefits like better dependency management, consistent library versions and centralized build platforms, it has also introduced new pain points in the daily local development loop. Builds got larger and took longer, uh, tooling became slower, especially Git, and downloading uh, third-party dependencies took too long, especially if developing away from the fast corporate network at the office. Besides these pain points introduced with monorepos, based on quarterly developer surveys, we identified that development setup was complex and time-consuming, and besides that, it also usually diverged from the recommended state, which made debugging and st standardization a lot harder. We knew that developing on laptops it's, is not going to scale so well. Therefore, we had to go beyond that and started exploring CDEs. And ultimately, we came up with DevPod, Uber's cloud development environment. Technically, DevPods are Docker containers running inside Kubernetes clusters. And to control the costs, but still provide high compute resources, uh, a certain amount of DevPods maybe sharing the same resources of a single compute instance and the environments are long-lived uh, persisting engineers data until it's cleaned up by themselves manually. With DevPods we were able to solve local development pain points and over two-thirds of Uber's engineers are now actively using our CDE. It's fast thanks to the unlimited cloud compute resources uh, by implementing uh, controlled access and isolation, we've made it secure and it's fully managed by us. Therefore, engineers do not have to worry about setup or maintenance and they are one command away from starting to code. And it's also tailored for Uber's monorepo development. And as a bonus, engineers are no longer complaining about throttling and overheating laptops. So let's see how we have achieved this. As mentioned previously, by moving to monorepos, build and tooling performance became a top pain point for our developers. By moving to the cloud, we got performance right out of the box. Builds have the time by utilizing powerful compute resources, and Git performance was also much better due to the chosen file system. Although, as you can see in this graph, uh, the gap between laptops and devpod uh, Git performance has been bridged by a recent implementation of GitFS Monitor for macOS, and we are eagerly waiting for the Linux counterpart of this feature. And uh, we have not stopped there though. Uh, for better hardware, we have benchmarked and upgraded host machines over the years. We have deployed remote build caches and artifact repositories close to dev pods, and we've moved the local build cache to SSD mounted uh, disks uh, to the host machine, which have higher throughput and lower latency when compared to network mounted disks 
that we use for persistent data. However, there's still one performance related concern. And since DevPods are sharing resources of compute hosts, sometimes multiple heavy users may impact each other during work hours. And to address this, we are working on a smart balancing algorithm uh, based on the environment's uh, compute foot footprint. And when it comes to developing on remote environments, latency is one of the most important factors uh, that directly contributes to user experience. We're currently providing five clusters close to Uber's engineering hubs to ensure low latency. However, there are still a few improvements to be done here. Uh, firstly, at the time of environment creation, we want to automatically select the closest region to the engineers to offload this step from them. Secondly, uh, even by having the clusters close by, uh, we have received feedback about a uh, not so stable network connection. And to address this, we are currently building the observability here. Uh, and a few technologies that we have surfaced are eBPF and uh, Thousand Eyes. And originally, we offered only one base environment to choose from. Uh, later on, we teamed up with Monorepo developer experience teams to create five different Monorepo tailored environments. Each of the environments have Monorepo already pre-cloned, uh, they require tooling pre-configured, uh, the IDE options set up and require plugins and ex extensions pre-installed, uh, and also uh, there is pre-warned IDE indices cache so that engineers could start coding in the IDE right away. Uh, and lately, uh, we've received more involvement from data workflows. Therefore, we are actively developing dev pods with GPU support. And uh, we have also committed to extend the offering for Android engineers uh, by providing Android emulators remotely. And uh, besides that, historically, uh, we have left our IS developers behind since the cloud offering for macOS machines was not so great. However, the idea of IS DevPods has resurfaced again, and we are reevaluating the possibilities here. Covering these uh, monorepo workflows in our environments is great. Uh, however, we've received feedback from our engineers that to do cross monorepo work, they still have to create an own multiple environments, and sometimes uh, it's a hassle to connect them in between so for the future, our vision is to consolidate uh, all of our offerings into one big environment for all Uber workflows. And even though we provide six different uh, environment offerings ready to go, uh, engineers still want certain parts of their workspace to be personalized. To address this, uh, we came up with devpod.yaml, a configuration that can be applied to devpods to persist changes over restarts. With devpod.yaml, engineers can define uh, the flavors uh, and region of their devpod, choose the default shell, uh, packages to be installed, uh, repositories to be, to be pre-cloned, and custom tasks to be executed. Technically, it's uh, uh, Ansible under the hood, executing place as the last step of the init process of our containers. It has also unlocked new possibilities. Uh, engineers started sharing their project-related configs with their peers, and uh, a new unofficial flavor, uh, community maintained flavor was created for data engineers to deprecate, deprecate some of their local workflows. Uh, we are also planning to implement project-specific DevPod YAML uh, so that engineers would have to spend less time uh, setting up specific projects and conveniently spin up new project tailored dev pods right from code browsing tools like GitHub or SourceGraph. And to connect to dev pods, we're officially supporting three main ways uh, VS Code, uh, JetBrains Gateway, and basic terminal access. Uh, and those connection options vary from flavor to flavor. Uh, IDs are actually one of the biggest pain points for DevPods today. 
as remote ID sessions are not yet fleshed out as a technology and IDs still have trouble with big repository support and code navigation, especially for certain languages, and not all of the tooling is supported for remote sessions. For VS Code, we're providing both remote SSH, remote SSH sessions and web ID support over, over open VS Code server. Uh, we have also recently formed a new IDE team to improve VS Code experience for Uber engineers. Uh, and the team is working on new plugins and extensions and also metrics to measure user experience. And we have started to explore how we could support Java and Android developers on VS Code. For JetBrains, uh, there's quite high sentiment across Uber engineers. And uh, previously we used to provide JetBrains projector option uh, as a web ID solution, which JetBrains deprecated in favor of Gateway. Therefore, we had to deprecate projector as well. And uh, JetBrains Gateway is a relatively, a relatively new product, but we have already got a decent user base using it daily. And therefore, there's a few engineers dedicated from our side to work on metrics and observability for gateway connections to DevPod. And initially, the only way to interact with personal DevPods was through a common line tool. To appeal to not so common lines have users, we created DevPod Central, a web UI to manage personal DevPods. Engineers are able to create, update, start and stop, restart and delete their dev pods. Uh, the web UI also offers quick access to the offered IDEs that differ from flavor to flavor and additional metrics and observability for their personal dev pods. Creating DevPod Central was a success from our side as so far almost half of engineers are using it as the main way to interact with their dev pods. Engineers are also, are also more informed and understand their personal environments better since we can provide more context conveniently in web UI. Managing these long-lived environments was a challenge for us. Whenever we released a new version of DevPod, we had to communicate it to our users uh, and ask them to update, update uh, their environments manually. This was a serious friction point and resulted in a big tail of trailing versions uh, visualized in this pie chart. To solve it, we automated version updates for DevPods. Now engineers do not have to worry about updating their environments manually as it is done for them automatically during the night. The rollout is done gradually over a course of few nights, taking into account the uh, usage of already updated uh, dev pods to decide how many environments should be updated the next night. With this feature, we also implemented semantic versioning to improve readability of versions and introduced release channels for various use cases. Uh, a stable one for, use, uh, for users that want stability a uh, release candidate for users that want cutting edge features, uh, a dev channel for engineers working directly with the project to stay in the latest nightly build, and none channel for workloads that should not be disrupted by version updates. And we're also heavily utilizing feature flags in our rollout process, and this allows us to do gradual rollouts in various cuts, like per region, per flavor, or per group of users. It's no secret that managing costs in the cloud is a challenge to many. While growing our user base, uh, we also had to be cost conscious to manage the costs of our long lived environments. To do that, we implemented multiple efforts, uh, starting with a workload uh, called automated shutdowns that scales down the dev pod uh, that have not been accessed for a certain amount of time thus releasing the compute resources uh, in a host machine. Once the resources were released in host machines, uh, we implemented a way to rebalance them uh, to not use more hosts than we actually need. And we also had to start cleaning up dev pods that were not accessed for a really long time or the ones that belong to ex-Uber engineers. 
Besides releasing the compute resources with automated shutdowns, we've noticed that still uh, that we're still paying quite a lot for persistent disks. And uh, for that, we utilized Kubernetes Volume Snapshot API to move the data of persistent disks into a cold storage, which was a significantly cheaper option. And as you can see in the graph, even with greatly growing adoption and engineers starting to utilize DevPods more heavily than we anticipated initially, uh, we've managed to consistently bring the costs down. And I also wanted to share one interesting fact uh, as a proof of my team's success. Uh, back when we just started developing DevPod, uh, we would reach out to tool owners and service owners uh, asking them to collaborate with us uh, and integrate their tooling with DevPods. And nowadays, this has completely turned around as tool and service owners are reaching out to us to integrate their tooling and services with DevPods as this is something that their users demand. We have seen a lot of community contributions and engineers sharing tips and tricks and demonstrating their work and pr presentations on DevPods. And engineers are quite satisfied with DevPods. Here's a few testimonials from a recent developer experience survey at Uber. And engineers are no longer complaining about complex development setup and slow tooling, which stands as a proof that we have solved the local development pain points. And in the long term, we want to bring truly magical experience to our engineers. And engineers should not even know that they're working on a remote development environment, as ID integration should, should probably reach such point where connections to a remote development environment is handled in the background without any friction to the user, even in not so ideal conditions like flaky network, for example. And since, since we have covered the local development part with DevPods, we're bringing them to CI and code review next. And to summarize today's talk, um, growing scale and complexity at Uber has introduced new pain points and developer experience service helped us to identify them. And DevPods, as Uber's cloud development environment, has drastically improved the developer experience. And for the ending note, uh, even though our team slogan is it just works, uh, it's important to, to zoom out sometimes and to think about how to make things not only work, but to how to make them work better.